Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today we're going to talk about a book that was a big surprise to me honestly when I finished it and read it with how much I ended up enjoying this and the book that I'm talking about is Witch King by Martha Wells. This book was the buddy read for June for my book club which is of Queens Witches and Valkyries where I read one old high fantasy book written by a woman or gender queer person per month. However, I had already read this earlier because I had an arc. And so, as always, let's talk about this book, starting with a quick synopsis. I'm not quite sure if I will keep to my usual negative thoughts, positive thoughts thing, because this book, while I do think there's some negative things, and while I do think there's a lot of positive things, I think a lot of this book and a lot of the enjoyment of this book comes down to expectations versus reality and I will kind of start out talking about that once I have talked about what this book actually is about. So this is a standalone adult fantasy and in it we follow Kai who at the very beginning of the story wakes up imprisoned. He does not know how he got where he is, he kind of can remember what happened just before he was imprisoned or before he woke up. But he wakes up in prison, he realizes also that his best friend is imprisoned with him. And so we follow him as he first of all tries to escape the prison and then tries to find out what the fuck actually happened to him. And also where his best friend's wife is because they can't contact her and usually with magic that shouldn't be an issue. The last element to the story is that Kai used to be known as the Witch King and used to be a very vital part in the past of this world and so throughout the story we get chapters with glimpses into the past, into what happened and how Kai, who by the way I don't think I mentioned that, is a demon, became known as the Witch King. And so let me put the book back here and then let's talk about it and let's start with expectations versus reality. This book recently, by the way this book is my first Martha Wells, so I did not read the Murderbot series which she is most known for, but this book I have realized has gotten quite a few mixed reviews since it came out. And now I don't think that any of the negative reviews are wrong or any of the positive reviews are wrong or that it's unfair that it has gotten mixed reviews. But when I scrolled through the reviews on Goodreads, on Storygraph, etc, something that I noticed is that there seems to be one common denominator with a lot of the negative reviews and that is disappointed expectations. That a lot of the people reading the story expected this kind of very epic story about this demon character that used to be known as the Witch King and who is now on this kind of quest for revenge against the people who imprisoned him. And in a way it is that, but it's it's also not what you'd expect when you hear that synopsis. Like the synopsis is not wrong. It is a quest for information for who imprisoned him. It is about this character who was known as the Witch King. But also it's not necessarily an epic story. It's actually a very small and very contained story and I think when you go into it expecting this epic story but then get this very contained story with some very nice world building in my opinion but a type of world building that doesn't necessarily lead anywhere, you can be pretty disappointed. So I think with this review my goal is not necessarily just to you know convince you to pick up this book but also to give you the right expectations so that you can know if you pick up this book if you're gonna enjoy it. And because of that I just spontaneously decided I'm gonna actually go by elements and I'm not gonna go by negatives and positives and just you know, if I have anything negative to say with the elements, then I'm gonna do that then. But let's start with the characters. First of all, I absolutely adored the characters. I love Kai. Uh, Kai is, like in a way, he is this very powerful demon being. He is this, just, you know, this person out for... He's not really out for revenge, to be honest. But, you know, he is this person on a quest 
and he's incredibly powerful. Most of the time when he comes across enemies in this book, he kind of defeats them very easily, which is a very interesting choice because you do want to see struggle every now and again, but in this book we don't see Kai struggling with his powers and with defeating enemies a lot. A lot of his struggles are more internal and more emotional also when it comes to, you know, fighting with other people and so on. So um, he is very powerful but at the same time he does not seem like this very powerful character because he is very drawn back, very drawn into himself. He has his past that he still deals with and in my personal opinion, like the way I describe him is just an emo sad boy. That That is what he is and he's mopping a lot and I absolutely love him, but again, when you expect the story to follow this very powerful character, maybe that's not necessarily what you want or what you need from this book or what you expect from the book. And so you end up disappointed by what Kai actually is. Similarly, also the side characters, uh, they don't necessarily always play the biggest role. So you do spend, even though it's written in third person perspective, if I remember correctly, yeah, it was written in third person perspective, but uh, it's only written from Kai's kind of point of view. Um, so you don't get that much insight into the other characters. However, I do still love the other characters. His best friend is just a very, <laughs> very divisive, angry lesbian. I absolutely love her. They kind of adopt this little child who is adorable. And then there's also this mute witch who I really enjoy uh, also the characters from the past. I just, I really, really enjoyed the characters overall. However, I also do agree, and that's something that came up every now and again in the buddy read as well, that it takes some time to get attached to the characters. I think for the first at least third of the book, I wasn't really all that attached to the characters. I also found myself not really picking the book up. Like, I was enjoying it when I was reading, but when I wasn't reading it, I was just forgetting about the book um, and forgetting about the characters, and so I wasn't that attached to it. But then there came a certain point in the book when I then started really getting attached. It's something that happened with Kai's character that I can't really mention because that would be spoilers. Um, and after that I was invested, but it also happened for some people in the book club that they didn't end up invested throughout the story. So yeah, I, I think it kind of depends on the type of person you are and the type of reader you are. How are you gonna feel about the book by the end of it? Then the plot I found the plot very interesting and I found the story to do something very interesting because there is this bigger thing going on that maybe would be the focus of the story if this actually was an epic high fantasy story. There are bigger politics going on in the world, there is potentially a bigger goal, however that was not the focus of the story whatsoever. The focus of the story literally was just Kai and his best friend trying to find her wife and also trying to, you know, find out what happened to them and kind of uncovering that. And through uncovering that, that probably could have been connected or like in ways is connected to this kind of epic fantasy type story. However, it was not actively connecting to that. Uh, and it didn't get into that even by the end almost at all. It almost feels like by the end of the story is the time when the epic plot only really just gets started but then the story is over and this is a standalone and so on. And so once again I do think that if this epic plot is something that you expected and if this epic plot is something that you wanted you could come out of the story being disappointed rather than satisfied by it. I just found the way that the framing of the story worked, also with the past and the present and so on, really interesting. And I find, you know, different ways of telling fantasy stories, just doing something different for the sake of doing something different, interesting, already on its own. So that was enough for me and I could still enjoy the story. But again, be aware of that. And also the same once again can be said for the world building. There are a lot of very detailed elements 
to the world building. However, the world building, just like the epic plot, they more so provide the framing and the backdrop for the story that is actually going on. And the story that is going on, that is focused on, is just very small scale. Not low stakes, it's still a high stakes story, but it's on a very small scale. Scale. It's very focused. It's really just surrounding those few characters And so I think if you're the type of reader that I actually usually am Who very much enjoys exploring the world exploring different cultures exploring the magic I Think this story like just know going into it that that's not what you're gonna get I don't know why it didn't disappoint me in this case I think for me it was just that I ended up falling in love with Kai too much so I ended up not even caring that much and it's not like you know the the way the world building is done is kind of just very rough and not detailed enough and like you don't feel like the world is lived in because I personally did get a feel for the world and for what it's supposed to be but it's just, you know, once again, it's not really that important to the story because we just follow a handful of characters and that's it. And the last thing that I want to talk about, which I just personally really enjoyed, is that I felt like pretty much all of the characters were in some way, shape or form queer. I think Kai's sexuality isn't specifically mentioned in the story but the way he's coded for me just feels very um, ace but also gay and then obviously his best friend is a lesbian Kai also himself there's some gender stuff going on because Kai is a demon and there's just stuff going on with demons where they within this world they don't live within their original bodies and so Kai throughout the story has different bodies and different gendered bodies as well. Kai himself, however, is always referred to with he, him pronouns. So yeah, with the queerness, it was just there. It was very casual. It wasn't necessarily explored in any meaningful or deeper way. However, I don't think every fantasy story needs to do that. And I just love casual representation or casual inclusivity already. But yeah, I think that was it for my review pretty much for The Witch King. I overall, I really enjoyed it. I really loved it. But I think you have to go into it kind of knowing what you're getting, not story-wise, but kind of framing-wise. And that, you know, it's not an epic end-of-the-world fantasy story, even though there are elements to that those aren't really followed, but that this is a very interesting small-scale mystery type of story where it's really just about a handful of characters trying to find out what happened to them and what happened to their friends. And while doing that we get some glimpses into the past of the characters that maybe provide a little bit of that epic story but those glimpses into the past really are more there to contextualize what the characters and who the characters are in the present. And so yeah, I loved it, I enjoyed it. I think I gave it 4 or 4.25 stars. I think I ended up giving it and it made me want to read more Martha Wells. But for you, I think just know what you're getting into and you might end up loving it as much as I did. So with all of that said, tell me in the comments down below if you have read The Witch King. Do you agree with my assessment of it? If you haven't read it, did I make you want to pick it up? If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media as well as to my book club are linked down below. So go and check those out. And I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye.